new AirPods, Apple Watch and iPhone. Approachable concurrency in Swift and custom AI agents in Xcode 26. The latest news from the world of iOS and macOS development coming up. I'm Alexander Bilous, engineer at Setup. Let's get started. In Xcode 26, Apple introduced a feature that could change the way we write multi-threaded code. It's called Swift Approachable Concurrency. Sounds heavy, but in practice, less confusion, less manual work, and safer async code. What's new? First, infer isolated conformances. Now, isolated types can directly conform to protocols. The compiler does the safety checks for you, catching data races before they happen. Before this, we had to use non-isolated, which was messy and error-prone. Second, non-isolated, non-sending by default. No more weird behavior with non-isolated async functions. They used to always run on the global executor. Uh, remove async, and suddenly it's on the caller actor. Sounds confusing. Now it's simple. Non-isolated async functions inherit the caller's actor. And if you want to change the behavior, just use concurrent attribute. There are also other features. Global actor isolated types usability, infer isolated conformances, infer sendable from capture. And here's the best part. You're in control. Turn them all on or just pick the ones your project needs. You'll find them in the target build settings, Swift compiler, upcoming features. And finally, Xcode 26 ships with the Swift 6.2. Want the full breakdown? Check out episode 28 of Main News by Roman. September is Apple season of big announcements. This year, the spotlight is on three categories. AirPods, Apple Watch, and of course, iPhone. Let's start with the new AirPods Pro 3. The third generation comes with a built-in heart rate sensor. Up to 10 hours of battery life twice the noise cancellation and the headline feature real-time translation. The price is set at $299. Next, Apple introduced three new Apple Watch models, Series 11, SE, and Ultra 3. They can now measure blood pressure, track your sleep, and deliver more battery life. On top of that, they support fast charging and even 5G. And then the main event, iPhone 17. The lineup includes four devices. The base iPhone, Pro, Pro Max, and newcomer, iPhone Air, which Apple calls the thinnest iPhone ever. The changes are striking. A new square-shaped front camera with a wider field of view, 18 megapixel resolution, and stage center feature. Promotion display with 120 Hz refresh rate and always on display across all models and brand new Apple design chips, and one for Wi-Fi and Bluetooth, and updated C1X for connectivity. The biggest upgrades, of course, are in the iPhone 17 Pro and Pro Max. They come with a powerful A19 Pro chip, cooled by a vapor chamber, three 48 megapixel fusion cameras, eight times zoom, and a bold new Pro color, Cosmic Orange. Honestly, I'm ready to say goodbye to my iPhone 14. After a launch like this, it's hard not to upgrade and add a little bit of orange to life. With the release of macOS Tahoe and Xcode 26, developers finally got access to the new Xcode AI Assistant. It often nudges you toward Swift testing or structure concurrency, but sometimes it feels a little biased. Why is that? Let's dig in. Developer wizard decided to investigate how the AI inside Xcode is built. At the core is a framework called IDE Intelligence Chat. Its heart is a structured planner executor agent. The agent is deeply integrated into Apple's development ecosystem, capable of calling tools at runtime and flexible enough to support multiply models providers and a dynamic set of tools. The framework comes with prompt templates for working with code, a knowledge base, file access, and project context. That context reflects exactly what's happening in Xcode which files you have to open, what code you're selected. Templates like current file and current selection translate your actions into data the AI can use. And of course, Apple puts safety first. The agent runs in a sandbox, with file access restricted at the system prompt level. 
but there is a catch. The combination of sandbox and the assistant's Apple-centric persona sometimes makes it too limited, which means the results don't always match what developers actually want. So, how does the full workflow really look? And how can you tweak it? You can find all the details in the original article. Link in the description. Apple is making a serious push into AI for developers. From day one, it's got 26 shipped with ChatGPT integration, and in the latest betas, support for Cloud by Anthropic has been added. According to Anthropic's press release, Cloud works in two modes. The first is Code Assistant, which automatically gets context from your project and helps with programming. The second is a developer toolkit that can generate documentation, Swift UI previews, and even help you navigate an existing code base. And that's not all. OpenAI has officially acquired Alex Sidebar, an AI agent built specifically for Xcode. In just one year, Alex gathered more than 20,000 developers in the Apple ecosystem. Now the Alex team will be working on Codex inside OpenAI. With Anthropic, ChatGPT, and Alex all in play, it looks like Xcode could become a true platform for AI integrations. But the big question remains. Will Apple allow developers to plug in third-party agents directly into Xcode? And could we see a native codex integration inside Apple's IDEs? Share your thoughts about the future of AI in Xcode in the comments. Swift Data has a serious competitor. Point 3 has just introduced SQLite Data, a fast and convenient alternative with support for CloudKit synchronization and even CloudKit sharing. And here is the kicker. It works on iOS 13 and macOS 10.15, which means there is no more excuse for your app not to sync data. Setting up the database is simple. The recommendation is to initialize it right at app launch, similar to how you would use model container in Swift data. Models are declared with table, and queries can be built using fetch all, fetch one, or fetch. They can be straightforward or as complex as you need with filters, sorting, and advanced selection logic. Everything is powered by structure queries, which can take either type's description or row SQL. And with the SQL macro, your queries are validated at compile time. No more typos slipping through. The real highlight is CloudKit Sync. SQLite data comes with a step-by-step -step guide, from configuring CloudKit services to building your own sync engine. You choose which databases and tables to sync, while well, conflicts resolution happens automatically. The latest changes always win. The documentation also covers common pitfalls and best practices for designing a CloudKit-ready data schema. If you are planning to add sync, this is the place to start. And finally, performance. The team benchmarked SQLite data against other libraries like Lighter, SQLite.swift, and even GRDB. The results are impressive. SQLite data run queries several times faster on a dataset of 16,000 records. Link to the repository in the description. That's all for now. Catch you in the next episode.